Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tier No The Losses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, or Mr. Ordo Socialist Lover. But one big union. Sasha had never been one for the theatrics, it simply wasn't favored in his line of work. And he wasn't going to start now. Even so, he was not immune to panic or anxiety. And this massive crowd of people, even if they were all unionists like him, was not really helping this, his stress levels. Goodness, why had the Gensec picked his union for administrative duties in the first place? Had he done anything to offend them? Well, it was immaterial. There was, after all, a job to be done. Sasha cleared his throat, tapped the mic, and at once the room fell silence. Is that mic with a... Uh... Is that a little mic? Okay. Welcome, friends. We are gathered here today at the request of the Republic and the General Secretary. A raucous voice called out from the front of the room. Yeah, yeah, we get the message. What does Seraph want from us again? Haven't we already promised the quotas? There was commotion and a hint of mocking laughter. Sasha gritted his teeth. Yes, comrade. The General Secretary is fully aware of this. Our efforts, I mean. But we must all work together for now. For the resistance against a degenerate capitalist. Again, a voice interrupted him, this time from the far end. Ain't we already gotten rid of the capitalists? I'd like to have a couple with uh, Gensec himself, seeing how he's wasting our time here. Maybe he'll sponsor me for the privilege. This time, the laughter came in... Uh, burst, and it was unrelenting. Comrade Sasha snapped into the mic. You are not listening to anything I've said. What I am saying is this. The Gensec wants us merged. Different professions, different industries, different companies. We are to be a single party now, and we must, must work in unison. There was a moment of pregnant silence, and everyone rose to speak at once. Questions one at a time, please. And we're currently doing the sun, a new set, a uh, new sun in the east. But next, clandestine services. Russia needs a clandestine transportation and supply network. Specifically, Russia needs the ability to move goods covertly. The goods can be anything, be it elements, valuable metals, industrial machinery. It just needs to be able to send or acquire these goods surreptitiously. As the state grows more powerful, it will have greater need to be able to source items and materials without notice. The goal is to be able to call upon resources which can be plausibly deniable and difficult to source. Very nice. And it is 1968, and by the end of this episode, we will be at war with uh, the old military district. But we do have some comes to go through. Such as, uh, send, don't forget to send troops to Africa and m the Middle East. That's probably a really good idea. Um, you know, I don't really feel like getting involved in Africa. Is there any war going on right now? Uh, ongoing conflicts? No, there's no war, so I'll probably forget about that, but thanks for reminding me, and I'll probably do the Middle East if we possibly can, the heart of liberation, though. Imperialist empires have caught up this planet, exploiting and destroying anything they can get their hands on. The Germans continue to tear down Europe and Africa brick by brick to prop up their dying Reich. Japan has begun a second age of colonialism, turning Asia into a glorified resource deposits for their own gain. America claims to be the last bastion of freedom in the dark. Cruel world. But they too serve the forces of capitalism and cosmopolitanism. They only aid regimes who serve their interests, abandoning any who wish to forge their own paths to the wolves. There is no hope for freedom to be found amongst these nations, no friends to those who wish to liberate their peoples from their enslavement. That changes today. The Soviet Union extends her hand to all the liberation movements across the world and shall lead them into the light. Russia, too, has seen her people oppressed, her people enslaved, her people slaughtered. Russia suffered a great deal of pain and bloodshed, but Russia shall rise from the ashes. We shall liberate our people free from their shackles so that we may be the example that other nations aspire to become. To any who desire to see the people free, trace, place your trust in us and Russia to support your dreams. No more shall the three empires lead this world. The people shall be free, free from capitalism, free from cosmopolitan... Yeah. Cosmopolitanism, free from oppression. Auto socialism is the ideology of liberation. It is the ideology of freedom. Glory to the revolution. Now we're gonna do this stuff. Now we can do this on total mobilization, but that's gonna really kill us in terms of uh, civilian factory construction speed and consumer goods. So no, not yet. Um, a blueprint for struggle. Yes, that'd be pretty good to do. Finish passage. Let's do a blueprint for struggle. Our unique ideologies put us in a rather compromising position. Most every other nation on this planet would see us fall, whether it be the National Socialists in Germany, the Fascists in Japan, or the Capitalists in America. Thus, we must embrace a doctrine of critical support for any anti-capitalist or anti-colonialist imperialist movements that might appear in the world. Our men in intelligence have created a standardized plan to follow an order whichever or whatever, whenever such a movement, rebellion, or revolution comes to our attention. A basic blueprint to follow, which involves immediate shipments of armaments, capital, and advisors to aid in the struggle in addition to the long terms volunteer deployment and international funding of any other resources they might need. We must do everything in our power to aid these revolutions and further destabilize our enemies. Absolutely. Keep working on gun stuff, though. Guns, guns, guns galore. Uh, we're slightly right-leaning, which is totally fine. Um, this stuff we can close out because we don't really care about it right now. And regional development would be good to get done. Um, equipment, yes. We have enough PP for all this stuff, so good. And army professionalism as well. Very good. And we have a total of 36 divisions, which is not bad, not great. Uh, but really, even those divisions aren't looking super great. So we kind of have to wait just a little bit. And a blueprint for struggle. Oh, oh, no, we made another division on. Nice. 
We have 23 billion in annual deficit, which is quite high, I'd say. I'd say that's quite high, but that's okay. Uh, we're missing quite a bit of equipment, especially anti-tank, artillery, and guns. So, yeah, that's not good. That's really not good, actually. Huh. That's really, 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 really not good. Uh, share the wealth a little bit more. There you go. And by wealth, I mean factories. Um, clan and services. Very good. A blueprint for struggle. Anything else here yet? Nope. And that's okay. Up next, an apparatus for liberation. Uh, no, let's encourage new officers first. Why not? While the old guard may have plenty of experience and knowledge from so many wars in the past years, they really aren't the kind of people we want manning our army. Many of them have sworn allegiances a dozen times over to whoever they find themselves working for at the time. Whether it be the fascist, traditional, communist, capitalist, it matters not to them. All that matters is their safety and comfort, and if they take a petty allegiance, then they will gladly proclaim allegiance all day and night. There are surely hundreds, if not thousands, of young, fresh soldiers with knowledge and experience from the Unification Wars, as well as a devotion and loyalty towards auto socialism needed to be an officer. We should begin promoting these kinds of men to officer positions. And poverty relief? Yes, please. Because right now we're looking pretty good for social reform and such. Mass mechanization is very good. All we need to do is go to modern agriculture and we'll be bueno. Nice. Followed up with reinstate the commissars. Political commissars are meant to be among the most loyal and devoted men in our military. Their job is to ensure that the soldiers in our military remain lo as loyal to auto socialism as possible. Due to our former relationship with the right, it wasn't possible to have political commissars of any particular strength or effectiveness now that, however, with auto socialists firmly in control of the government, we can have real political commissars with loyalty and drive. They will be the vanguard, fighting on the front lines with our men and making sure that treason and disloyalty towards auto socialism remains nothing more than a fear and not a threat. I think we're boosting up the spending for military spending too, because we need more output. We really, really could use more output right now, so. Hey, we just got rid of 2,000 more, or got rid of the deficit of 2,000 more guns. Another comment was, uh, for class donation. Yes, for class donation, my friends. Absolutely, 100%. This is why we're doing it. Why we're doing it. Another one was, uh, when we're done here, can we invade Korea? <laughs> yeah, we can. Uh, if you guys really want to, yeah, we totally can. Yeah, we barely spend, if we spend more on military spending, it barely does anything, which is actually fine with us. Just because this is not looking good. Hey, another 1,000 done? Great. So yeah, we'll, we can invade Korea. We'll have to use cons commands, but that's fine. By the end, we'll be really strong, but in Idor history. The Unification Wars were a grueling and savage affair, but they served well to hone our military, much like a hunter hones a knife. In the aftermath of such a bloody conflict, we've learned quite a lot, and we'll be modifying our doctrines based on lessons we've learned. We gain experience fighting in the varying terrains of Russia, we learn better how to manage our supply lines, and most importantly, our men got real combat to train with, and we can use their experiences to continue bettering our military. All forces trained to win the last war they fought. That they fought, of course. Good, good, good. Keep, keep going, keep going, keep training, because you guys are definitely not there yet. Um. Oh, 10% more soft attack is real nice. Better consumer goods? Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. yes. One, two, almost three. Almost three there. Better agriculture methods? Great. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. We've maxed out in 68, almost 69, with modern agriculture. That's actually really good. Really quite good. Awesome, 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 awesome. Almost 24 billion, that's fine. 8.1 in terms of GDP growth? Not bad. The Legacy of the Great Patriotic War, which thins a lot left, versus the Bleeding Tomorrow. Well, as much as we want to do that, we're not really going to be using Airborne too much, or eh, not really helicopters. So if you want to read about Bleeding Tomorrow, please go ahead. We're going to go left. The Legacy of the Great Patriotic War. It was always about Zhukov and Voroshilov, who had the right of it when they came to military affairs. Their idea was about using mass industrial combat combined with more traditional Russian tactics were revolutionary. And had they implemented these ideas earlier in the war against Germany, we very well may have pushed the hunt back and even won. We should endeavor to implement their ideas about warfare into our doctrines in an effort to modernize our military. Zhukov and Voroshilov were great generals, and let us not waste their insights. We're going to need a lot of divisions to fight Germany. A ton of divisions. Holy crap. And these guys are all 40 combo, which is nice, but... We're going to need a ton of them to fight Germany. Right, so that's not looking bad. Great. Oh! Everyone but that please go ahead. So now, these guys really just want to kill each other off. Okay. It's fine with us. So be it. So be it. A grand showdown. Yes. <clears throat> Learning from the past. The military is currently in desperate need of doctrinal changes. If Serov ever wishes to forge a stronger Soviet Union, the military must be just as strong. What better way to evolve the military's doctrine than to just learn from the past? Russia has seen lots of conflict in the last several decades, and the military's high command have all lived through these conflicts and seen what works and, of course, what does not. Every military prepares for the next for the last war they fought, and Russia's military will be no or shall be no exception. 
Specific ideas of interest can be picked up from the Great Patriotic War, with the Blitzkrieg quickly leaving Europe's armies disorganized and unable to keep up. Innovations to how do we use armor, how we use aircraft, and how we use infantry all should be implemented into our doctrine. Of course, the West Russian War and the various warlord conflicts throughout Russia have also given us many valuable lessons to learn from. Once we have implemented these changes, Russia's military shall be prepared to fight any kind of war it finds itself in. If we do not learn from history, we are doomed to repeat it. 100% agree. Lessons from Red Napoleon. Tukhachevsky was a genius on the battlefield if there ever was one. He was a giant on the battlefield, easily among the greatest generals of the Second World War and the West Russian War. His doctrine regarding discipline and battle tactics was revolutionary in an era that has all but abandoned excellence, the excellence in the field. Technology is obviously important, but it's a general, commander, and the captain with whom the focus should lie. If we can train our men to think on their feet and come up with creative solutions to dangerous situations, then we will have succeeded. The German relies on his guns, tanks, and missiles to do all his work, but he never thinks. None of these, none of those things will do him any good if he doesn't realize he's already been flanked. Margaret Chase Smith inaugurated? Wow. Can she keep her party united? Probably not. Now we get a bonus for armor? Great. Because we're going to need a lot of strength for armor. Actually, we should make more armor divisions, but... Hey, we'll see. Awesome, awesome. And come back over here and do... Okay, we got better tanks. Thank God we were thinking about that ahead of time. See, Russians think. Germans, maybe not so much. Maybe not. Think ahead of time. What's going to happen? One, two, three, some. Nice. All right. And then... Uh, that's not bad. These are just blueprints. Is there anything else here? No, not really. So we'll go with developments for, on the Kalashnikov. The AK-47 is one of the finest rifles to come out of Russia possibly ever. It's cheaper to produce, extremely reliable, and replaceable parts, and it's simple to understand and use. It, I completely agree. As it stands, the rifle's on parallel. This needs to change. While the design is superior in every capacity compared to the older rifle models, this is rather unremarkable in the history of the rifle developments. The next generation of guns will always be superior to the last, and the AK-47's excellent design today may become obsolete tomorrow. We mustn't be content to rest on our laurels while rifle technology in other nations surges ahead. Absolutely. Nice. Keep boosting up. Boost, boost, boost. When you're done, keep boosting some more. Implementing a new doctrine. Tukhachevsky may not be a loyal follower of Ordo Socialism, but Serov still believes his ideas on warfare could be used of use in his military. The man is called the Red Napoleon for a reason, after all. That is why Serov overdated his generals to read up upon Tukhachevsky's military theory and find a way to implement it into their own doctrine. Tukhachevsky's writing on discipline. Within the army, interested the general secretary greatly, as it easily fell in line with the older socialism's teachings. Tukhachevsky desired the entire chain of command to adhere to the spot and discipline. Pushing generals who failed to uphold their duty, of course, Serov's generals were far more eager to discuss the actual tactics Tukhachevsky described. Offensive deep battle, defeating the enemy not only at the line of contact, but throughout the battlefield. Tukhachevsky also placed great emphasis upon operations as a third level of military thinking and a crucial part of military theory. Serov's generals had a lot of work ahead of him. Integrating these new theories on armor, aviation, reconnaissance, airborne units, command, and control, and even chemical warfare would take some time and a lot of organization. However, through this momentary pain, the new military doctrine will be strong enough to preserve Russia through any conflict. The Red Napoleon's riding shall serve auto socialism incredibly well. Now we're balanced. We like being balanced. Sometimes we have to be balanced. And applied MBT designs. Designing a tank suited for our particular need is no simple task. Not only must it be reliable enough to trudge through the muddy swamps of western Russia through Rasputitsa, but also must fuel efficient enough to operate for long hours or even a few days without refueling. Worse yet, any tank we design must have the armor to tank a shell or two from the German tank and hit back just as hard. Our tank technology is now decades behind of that of Germany, so developing such a tank will take time, applying what lessons we've learned from the unification wars would serve as a starting point at the very, very least. Doing for billing, not bad. We're making more divisions, but we're three and a half almost, so, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. And developments on the Kalashnikov. We're good. Uh, really, you guys are forty, almost. They're not even forty yet. They're forty now, though, which is awesome with APCs. Military police is okay. You know what? It's looking okay with, if we use that. So let's go over here and let's do that. Even more armor on our armor. Get some more of that. Hurts our organization, but I don't really care. We're gonna need to really improve. Yeah, I'm gonna focus more on um. APCs. We need more organization. We just straight up need more organization, man. Uh, let's do the Swiss connection. Hitler may have very well been right when he proclaimed so many years ago that the Swiss were the moral enemies, mortal enemies of Germany. Switzerland's global international banking system has, ha has had a hand in almost every nation, from the U.S. to Japan to Germany. At this very moment, a network of several Swiss bank accounts are being registered in ours and several other fake names in Geneva, through which our contacts in America will be d begin dumping Japanese stocks in New York Stock Exchange. This relationship with Switzerland is already having the looks of ex being extremely beneficial. Hey, get better consumer goods. Nice. Awesome. Um, what am I thinking? I'm thinking something here. Thinking, 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 thinking. Um, I don't want to keep training because at any moment they could technically attack, but... <clears throat> you got to be ready for them. We have to be ready. The Swiss connection. And Serbia goes into isolation. Goodbye, Serbia. 
And there go the Iberians, followed up with... Uh, let's do a contest for Bretagne. Bretagne is one of the undisputed capital of the black market underworld. Every product imaginable flows through the markets, from guns to tanks to information to people. The latter which being the one we are most interested in. We mean people not only in the sense of Bretons, or Bretons, trafficking operations which we can use to move around witnesses, agents, and other such assets, but also in the sense of access to powerful and corrupt leaders. Establishing contacts in Bretagne will help us towards this end. Also another comment was, uh, use the second West Russian war submod, which allows us to go to war with Germany manually, or just maybe not even manually, just go to war with them, to recapture Moscow and such. So, war on the rise, winner takes all. Cool. Uh, yes, I've actually downloaded it and actually have it installed right now, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. No guarantees that it'll, it'll go right, but we'll see what happens. That's, that's all I can really say. Because we will try to do that. We'll try to go to war with maybe Germany first and then Korea. We'll see what happens. We'll probably go end a nuclear war. Let's be real. <laughs> so, uh, I don't want to be the one to be aggressive. Because we still have so many things here. So, let's not go to war and get the defensive bonus when we get war declared upon from us. But, we're the skin of the capitalists. <clears throat> it is our duty as the creators of auto socialism to ensure the existence and growth of this ideology which has been deemed by both us and reality to be the preeminent law of nature for Russia and beyond. Necessary to this growth is the subversion of our morals, if only for a small amount of time so that we may guarantee the survival of order socialism. Germany tolerated the existence of the USSR throughout the beginning of World War II so that it could consolidate its gains and expand its realm. And with that strategy, Germany has emerged as a master of Europe. We shall ignore, ignore history, even if it means dealing with those we hate. We are more intelligent than them, and we know this arrangement will not last. The extermination of the bourgeoisie will take more than gunshots and rage. <clears throat> it's taken months, and, and, but we have done it. We're in the faces of bourgeois pigs. Those reactionaries and parasites in the Swiss bank have relented to our influence. Soldiers of Serov and agents of all the socialism wandered in. Dripping in blood, gunshots behind them, and the bankers accepted us because those exploitative fiends will take any chance they can to squeeze a profit from the suffering. We use many methods, from interjecting ourselves into loans and transactions to offering our dissidents and traders up as cheap labor for markets abroad. By becoming ever more involved in Swiss financial institutions, we have secured a place for us in the international marketplace, be it small. As our nation expands, our ideology takes root in the populace, and our economic bubble grows larger. We necessitate connections in Europe. From a hook in Europe's marketplace, our influence will expand into a wedge, and eventually we will become a player akin to Romania or Turkey. This shall be the beginning of our prolonged manipulation of the bourgeoisie, but do not fret. Ex extermination is on the horizon. Now, as needles behind our backs. <clears throat> Any day now, they could declare war upon us, which is not good, of course. Uh, standing by, no. Do we have any spare planes? Yes. Nice. And the Finnish Passage. Finland has a rather unique economic and political situation as far as European nations go. Finland is one of the only nations in Europe which possesses both access to the German economic bloc as well as its own independence. By permeating Finland with Russian agents, we might be able to hopefully gain some to covertly breach the German economic bloc and gain access to the markets. If we can move Russian goods in and out of Russia through Finland, we would be successfully avoiding a White Sea bottleneck as well as providing a, a glimpse into the economic activities of Germany. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty darn good. We will not be the aggressors here. How strong are these guys? They're going to be very strong, I bet. They don't have a lot of manpower, but that's just because they have up to 71 divisions. Holy crap. We only have 42, so. And what is their stability war sport like? Um, Pretty high. Pretty darn high, just like us. Pretty darn high. Unfortunate. But that is alright. We have plenty enough things to do. Alright, I said that, and now they go to war with us. I'm going to make small little maneuvers to begin with, though. Man, our organization is just not that good. Are they attacking us anywhere? No, they're not. But hey, at least we're on defense. We can claim that we are the defenders of our liberty. Ah, on the other side's killing themselves too. Nice. Jolly good. Alright. Um, for now, you guys hold. The finish passage. Ah, and they want to attack us? Alright, so be it. Well, you guys can hop out there probably too. 
Necro. In the depths of the drug pen, soldiers of Seraph and agents of all the socialism sit and recline, enjoying the fruits of Hades. Yegor, the head of the agent, stands on his seat with bloodshot eyes. He wields a needle containing a mixture of morphine, heroin, and liquefied pevitin. Yegor raises his arm, clenches his fists, and jams the needle into an exposed vein. Yegor doubles down, or doubles over, the rush of pain and euphoria washing over his body once. The agents laugh and whistle, slapping tables and smashing bottles of alcohol. The walls are washed in grime and suit, and homeless addicts litter the corners of the den. A neon haze emanates from the deadlights of dead lights above. Yegor rests himself on his seat, clenching something. The walls wash away, and the faces of the agents look to be the photos of the Persian maimed. Yegor leans back, the drug seeking a toll in his cognition. A strange sight appears. A lanky, pale figure in business attire appears to sit in front of him. Yegor looks to his comrades, confused at what this vision could mean, recalling his mission. He remembers that he was to meet a contact of some sort, unable to speak. Yegor stares forward to a blurry visage which may or may not be the contact. The figure unfurls a long, black thing, wielding the brain activity he still possesses. Yegor recognizes it as a weapon. This was a weapon smuggler, yes. The agent moves closer, forming a circle around Yegor and the figure. He glances to and fro, beads of sweat rolling off his face. This was, this is, was a Breton. It was some sort of deal about the black market and the trafficking of agents worldwide. The details have been lost to Yegor's mind after an eternity, or perhaps a few seconds as the figure stood tall. Reaching out his hand, maybe? Yegor pulsed his muscles through great effort, similar to the launch of a rocket. Yegor built up pressure and flung his hand towards the shape. Soon after the figure was gone, the deal forged. Nice. Very nice. I just hope we can win here. Because we're losing here, which is not good. Hey, but we overran them. Nice, nice, nice. Go on in immediately. As long as you can hold for now, that's all that matters. Destroy those five divisions, and we have. Great. Alright, so we lost quite a few guys. 9,000 versus 100. We would have killed up 105,000. Holy crap. And they got a lot more manpower now, which sucks, but whatever. Um, let's go to the next focus, too. Why not? Um, Away from the ground. Oh, I'll do that one. Despite what our general said, the army isn't the only branch involved in warfare, and this should not be only focused on exclusively. Both our Navy and Air Force are in dire need of attention. Our Air Force is but a shell of the organization it once was decades ago, but that's to say nothing of our Navy, which for all intents and purposes no longer exists. It would take several years to bring either into any sort of military capable shape, and several more to match those of Germany or Japan. It would be expensive and time consuming, but rebuilding these branches of the military would be vital to our future success. Alright, so let's let our guys get a little bit more refocused here. Um, I'm surprised that they're not attacking. Our lines are pretty darn thin, I'll be honest. All right, and you're just falling apart. Uh, we can't really help them out. Oh, we can't really help them out right now, but that's okay. We made one more division so far. Ah, they are attacking now. Okay. We're losing down here, which is not very good, but they are attacking in other areas too, so. Overall, their losses will be incredibly high if we can manage it successfully. All right, thanks. You want to die? Thank you very much. Boost it up, baby. The debt is but a number. Pavel Batov. Batov. They has a crap ton of divisions. We've killed off almost 200,000 of them, though. We've literally killed off at least 200,000 of them now, so. Keep holding out, baby. You're doing a great job, guys. You're doing a great job. Can we get to a quarter million, maybe? They have 81 divisions. Jesus Christ. They've lost a quarter million so far. They've got to be out of manpower now, right? No, they're not. They just keep... How do they get more manpower? I don't know, but holy crud. Holy smoky daddies. The Finnish Passage? And away from the ground. Uh, you dare want to attack us? Hey, we can still hold out, though. A century in the snow. Trucks roared across the frost-flaked slush roads of Finland's hotland. They rode towards a ramshackle hotel, leaning lopsided amongst the cold wilds. The trucks cantered around the hotel, circling the wagons. From the trucks emerged the soldiers of Serov, thugs and brutes against agents of Odo socialism. They slammed shut their truck doors, the muck and sludge splashing under the leather trench coats. They whipped out their pistols, prepared to bring flashes of light to the dawn. Stomping into the hotel, they shuffled towards the contact, the German agent who would act as a middleman between the two polities, if only in unofficial capacity. The agents of Serov fled to the hotel, pushing over tables in search of hidden weaponry and cracking open the windows in case of an ambush. The head of Serov's agents, Yegor, took a seat with a German contact, cracking his knuckles and laying a pistol at the center of the table. He motioned to the other agent, who brought forward a shot glass and a bottle of Kosken Korva Vilnia. Yegor looked insulted for a moment before throwing the shot glass to the side and cracking open the kosu. He chugged down the vodka enough to refresh his throat and so half the bottle. Those Finnish dudes get all the good alcohol, the war, the death, it could all be tolerated, but the lack of good drink. That is the greatest burden our people bear. Now, on to our, he chuckled to himself, negotiations. Yegor began to pat the rickety wooden table upon which they sat. We understand you can't yet begin any formal actions with our nation, so let Finland be our back door for our hands to be shaken in commerce afloat. We have depots in Lapint Lapinranta, 
Usim, Anvanta. Now, what do you say, hun? The German contact stared at his surroundings. The agents began to unfurl their knives and brass knuckles. Igor's hand crawled forward until his fingers touched the grip of his pistol. A deal it is, the hun spat. I will... Get some workers to form a few connections at your depots. Finland shall be your gateway. The gods dead and the lock broken. Very good. Wings of a mother, 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 mother the motherland. The destruction of the, by the, the Luftwaffe has dealt Russia as unimaginable by all accounts. A sustained decade-long bombing campaign indiscriminately destroying everything over a couple stories tall. The bombing campaign permanently scarred our people, and there isn't a Russian alive without a story to tell from those years. Such a thing can never be allowed to happen again. Our air force must become powerful enough to deter even the thought of engaging Russia in the air. Never again will our people see the Luftwaffe planes of our Russian skies. They just love killing their own man. They lost a third of a million so far. And you know what? We actually are still out of equipment. <laughs> we need more tanks. APCs are okay. We need artillery and infantry equipment. Ah, the power of auto socialism is too strong for Pavel Batov. I'm kind of waiting for more uh, societal development stuff too, so. Alright, uh, we're at over, uh, rough, almost. We're approaching half a million. We are approaching half a million so far. Actually, what? Oh, that being words, Iberia's dusk. Goodbye, Iberia. Uh, what is their stockpile like? Operation 10, though. 77 divisions. Um, well, that's not looking great for them. Look at those militia and infantry divisions up here. Holy crap. There goes Oman. Anything? Oh, they have 43 things of some planes. Everything else out. They're out of. Very good. Ah, oh, improved APCs. This is jolly good. Get some of this. Breakthrough armor. Uh, there's no more things for organization, but that's alright. Better APCs. Thank you very much. Um, attack them until they literally die. Away from the ground, my friends. Away from the ground. And then, uh, let's see. Intelligence on the field. Field intelligence on the military is arguably more important today than it has ever been in the present. Knowing where your enemy is and whether or not your enemy knows where you are could mean the difference between throwing a few artillery shells at the enemy and receiving a few instead. This distinction is made all the more important by the massive technological gap between us and our enemies. While we might be throwing shells at the enemy, they may see fit to launch missiles at us. Our reconnaissance ability will be vital in the wars to come, and it's important that we recognize, of course, this fact. Five divisions. That is a lot of dudes. My goal is to cut these guys off, though. They must have got more manpower by coring stuff, perhaps. Is that not the only explanation we have? Maybe. I don't know. A Republican victory in Yemen. All right. You're going to go all the way down there. I should have used tanks for this, but whatever. Good, good, good. This is going to be very risky, and then we'll do a general attack, maybe. We'll see. Uh, you know what? Hold first, hold first, hold first. Let the line move around a little bit more. Because, okay, at this point, just... We'll try it. Because they're so weak in a lot of areas. So we're going to probably take about 100,000 casualties, maybe 150,000 maybe. I'm not really sure. But their casualties are going to be extreme. They've already lost another 17 divisions. Nice, nice, nice. All right. You guys get down here. And you can encircle them. Two-thirds of a million have died? That's not enough. Not enough. Look at these guys. See, I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't worried at all about this stuff. Like, I knew that these guys would die over here. What are you doing, you son of a gun? Advanced infantry rifles are nice. Get some more... Oh, that's a little bit ahead of time. Let's do that one instead. We're out of a deficit, so we should make new ones? No, but we'll do it anyways, because we can. Nice. Ah. Oh. Beautiful. 46 divisions left. That's 46 too many. Follow Gol Golovko's footsteps. Arseniy Golovko was a, a Soviet admiral who served in the Soviet Navy, specifically as commander of the Red Banner Northern Fleet during the Second World War. His fleet, while small, served an important role protecting our northern waters in the White Sea. The Nazis were never able to push us without any success in the White Seas as a result of his excellent command, and his fleet was even aided in a few offensives. Ultimately, we should hope to imitate his rather successful fleet. Forming a small, efficient commerce production raiding Northern Fleet would do its wonders at protecting Northern trade during peacetime, and protect ports and naval supply lines during wartime. I know when you say this for, uh... Uh, oh, don't do that one. We don't need that one because we have maxed it out. So save it for coring stuff, but that's okay for now. Oh, man, these guys. Baatov has expended too many of his resources inefficiently. Almost 900,000 dead Russians. And for what? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. A failure of a general here, man. A failure. Too much of a reactionary. Or Korean. Hey, everyone, about this. Go ahead. Great. Oh, we can spend more? 
Um, that's okay. We don't need to do that one too. We have enough manpower for now. Boost it up some more, guys. Ah, oh, great. The plant has been captured. Have they have less than 10 divisions? Over 900,000 have died? Not enough. Alright, do anything else here? Yes. Propaganda campaigns? Eh, we're kind of okay as well. An apparatus for liberation. We must turn our state into an efficient machine of worldwide resolution if we're to defeat the capitalists and corporates of the world. Our state intelligence apparatus will have to ascend beyond that of original influencer. Our intelligence agency will it itself become an international network of liberation movements and freedom fighters cooperating and coordinating under our global umbrella of support. Our global intelligence network will soon become even more influential and powerful than the CIA's. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. Four decades of history in our hands, my friends. Oh my goodness, there's a lot to incorporate. Um, let's say, what do we do? Preserve the revolutionary. Yes, we will absolutely do that. Give more authoritarian socialism, more political power and stability. Yes, absolutely. 100%. No questions asked. And begin courting everything. And we need, I'm going to say, at least 80 divisions to fight the Germans. 80 divisions of 40 combat with infantry. Oh, actually, if we, we actually might be able to take out Kazakhstan first. Let's see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, that's looking neck One, two, three, four, almost five. Very nice. If you'd like to read about better research facilities, please go right ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually. But, saturate the West. A contingent of about 30 of our agents have re most recently been sent across the border into Muscovy. Their jobs make contact with the anti-German act activists and revolutionaries in the region. Once we've established connections with these groups, we'll begin coordinating with them with an one another as we start moving supplies into the region. We will have our agents aid these groups in expanding and increasing recruitment. The more people we can radicalize, the better. Our ultimate goal is to prime the region for su to support Russia when the time comes for war with Germany, which we will attempt to do by energizing and expanding the anti-German movements in the region. Send agents into the Eastern Rex Commissariat to support anti-German activities. Very good. And since we're so close, we're just going to go ahead and start getting more research for computing machines. And then infantry anti-tank. We'll probably go ahead and do some of this because we would like to get this one done too. Ah! An intelligence agency. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, followed up with this one. Thank you very much. We have some dockyards, which mean nothing to us basically, but whatever. And then ensure a liquid border. The border between Muscovine and Russia has been in influx for decades since the West Russian War. Official maps put the Muscovine Russian border at the AA line, despite the fact that they haven't controlled Akhangosk since 54. Germany has more accurately more accurate internal maps, but those were further confused by the mess of warlord states whose borders with each other and Muscovine was always in flux. This liquid border made it exceptionally easy to move agents and other supplies across the border, something we've taken advantage of with some frequency. Unfortunately, since the unification of West Russia, Germany has made increasingly large scale attempts to pin down where the border is and lock it down. Even contacting us for assistance. Given that it's in our best interest to continue Germany's border woes, we've made an effort to be as confusing as possible on the subject. We've had our diplomats tell uh, <clears throat> Germany different information on where we believe the border to be. We've provided false information on the geographical landmarks and other such locations on the border. Most impressively, we've even uprooted and moved an entire border checkpoint on two occasions in order to confuse German cartographers sent to map the border. The liquid border will remain insured. Great. Oh, it's sort of a border war. Oh, crap. Um, excellent. Better army professionalism. Instead of widespread cronyism, we got political interference. Great. Uh, Pensa and Strava... Uh huh. Pensa. We actually start a border war here. Holy crap. Um, if that's the case, I'm gonna go ahead and just send you guys over here then. Um, technically we should be able to win. They have a lot of militia. But let's wait to do that one first and uh, uh, do this one. Pollinate the steps. Kazakhstan and the rest of Central Asia will be invaluable allies in the future. Their position on the continent separates us from German aligned Iran and can provide us an avenue through which we can reach and access India. We must saturate their lands with our own agents, allowing them to infiltrate the governments and orient their foreign policy towards our own ends. We should hope to, in time, have an agent at every level of government, from the low level bureaucrats to the highest level politicians. And also, we it looks like we just court stuff, because actually, we were losing 0 0.71 political power every single day. And additionally, uh, I do know that you guys said to send volunteers. We cannot. Like, as you see. Uh, we have no reason to involve ourselves. So, unfortunately, we cannot. I mean, that'd be nice. I mean, when TNO2 comes out, like, we should probably, would probably be able to, but right now we cannot. So, it kind of does, as some might say, suck that we cannot. Cool. But in the meantime, how about we import some more heavy machinery and improve our poverty rate soon? Now, that's next. We could do Russian reunification, but I don't want to lose our current tree here. So, uh, we'll see. I guess headed over. Oh, you guys are already there. Nice, 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 nice. More population is always good. Uh, let's go to uh, six. We need more. We just need straight up just so much more. And then we'll choose ensure liquid border. Oh, far. oh victory no man. Oh, nice little hat, dude. Nice little hat. Sudan, ensure a liquid border. Yes, please. And then we'll split the separatists, which would be very good to do. A liquid border. We love the liquid border. We love the fluidity of it. And there goes Portugal. We only have 218 factories, which is not enough, but whatever. Happy 1970, though, everyone. Happy, happy, happy 1970. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of this stuff, too. 
followed up with separate, split the separatists. A center divided Central Asia as an easily controllable Central Asia. The larger and more unified these nations become, the greater the threat they pose to Russia. Therefore, we should strive to keep these nations as divided and unstable as possible. Our intelligence advisors suggest that it wouldn't be too difficult to play these countries off one another, sparking border conflicts and wars that weaken their overall strength and stability. Our men already have underground supply lines funneling weapons into these countries, and should unification become inevitable, we can be assured it will be a leftist, auto socialist, aligned nation that succeeds. Yes. Tough and infiltrator. Nice. Very good. Internal and uh, integrated circuit computing and such. Good. More up, up please, because we're still out of guns and actually we're out of tanks. Uh, we have actually more than enough anti tank right now, which is good to see. Uh, if that's good, we're gonna lower you by five. Increases by five, then. There you go. Nice. Increases by three more for right now too, and then we can f finish off some more tanks. And actually, we got a lot of gas going along already. That's pretty nice. The Far Eastern... Oh! Well, so much for peaceful unification, right? Sakharov has won. So be it. This one's really good to do as well. Eloquent Boda, and so far we're winning. Looking so far pretty good. Pretty good. And then split the Separatists. I do want to see what happens here. Are we actually, we're actually going to win this, huh? Do we actually get to keep this? That'd be really nice. John White. You sound very German. Breach! Great. Truly great. Actually, you know what? Maybe we won't go to war with Kazakhstan yet. We'll see what happens. A line of trucks ventures far into the depths of the Rex Commissar at Moscow in the German rampart against the de Roman, Ru Roman Russian deluge. The trucks were painted in red German colors and manned by German-speaking Russians, but this was no trade mission or procession of an envoy. The trucks held within underground weaponry and drugs that even the Bretons wouldn't tell to the markets. Germany had an active, pulsing black market, and Serov was eager to pierce into those most elusive black veins of commerce, even if they would have to break into Moscow to do it. At the head of this mission was a drug-addicted mobster turned soldier of Serov and against Otto's agent of so Otto Socialism, Yegor. The trucks roared onwards, passing across the muddy waste of West Russia into the dirt road of inner Muscovy. Yegor peered out of his position in a corner in the back of the head truck. He motioned for his comrades to bear the weaponry. Upon entering a wooded clearing, Yegor demanded that the procession of trucks stop moving. He waited, tightening his brass knuckles. He swallowed down a package of World War II-era Pervitin tablets raw. The walls washed away, and with the dosage, Yegor achieved a fiery simplicity. A bullet pierced the side of the truck, all originating from the forest, enemies and allies all waiting to be destroyed at his hand. The soldiers of Serov emerged from the trucks and charged towards the edges of the forest. A rain of bullets cleared the trees, and yet the men marched on. Upon making contact with the German ambush, the bears pounced and mauled those who opposed them. The Germans were stunned as the Russians smashed into the chests of soldiers and snipers alike, their guns no deterrent. The Russians hopped from one opponent to the next, tearing through skin, guts, and flesh. By the end, neither Serov nor the black market mattered. This would be very be the little victory of a little Russia. Opportunities lie beyond. They lose a lot of uh, stability, which is nice. We gain the spirit agents in the west. Nice. We actually get an attack bonus against them. That'll be really good for the future. And a mission abroad. The Middle East is a powder keg. Uh, not unlike the Balkans, there are dozens if not hundreds of insurgency and liberation movements in the area, and already unstable nature of the region will make it easy to infiltrate, manipulate, and further destabilize. Our men have already made contact with Ba'athist liberation movements across the region, as well as Kurdish separatists in specifically northern Iraq and southern Turkey. Disrupting Middle Eastern politics and pushing it further towards civil war and unrest shouldn't give us too much difficulty. Also, maybe then we can do that stuff. Okay, that sounds really good then. Good. 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 We're starting to build some infrastructure, huh? I don't think so. Good. More civvies. Max out that civvy stuff first. Any green must be covered with civvies. Yeah, I can finish up that oh, infrastructure first. That's fine. Whatever. Um, and go all the way to the bottom, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. There you go. Actually, there's a lot of infrastructure that's already been built. I think we're doing quite some good things over here before we took it over. Which is very good. Very, very good to see. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything, but I probably did, honestly. Um, get some off. We could use some right there. Eh, radar's okay. Not really worth it, though. And, thank you. Um, military spending. We're okay for now. We don't need to uh, spend anymore for now. Artillery really needs some help, though. Alright, how are we going to influence these guys? Oh! Central Asia. The time has come to expand... To begin expanding the tendrils of our influence and radius of our ideological sphere at Central Asia. The first non-Russian region we begin impacting in any meaningful way. Shall serve as a playground and testing air arena as we attempt to see what methodology best serves the expansion of oral socialism on the international stage. We shall begin a campaign of mass interference across Central Asia as we attempt to correct the past of socialists who have, in their misguidance, rejected the nationalism and Marxism, Leninism, orthodoxy of auto socialism. Non-social stateless shall be guided back towards the life through the promotion of Soviet era, of Soviet 
era in the Soljo, and the backing of socialist movements abroad in our attempt to return the, to the brighter era of Lenin's Russia. Um, this one, yeah, that's actually really worth doing. Uh, this is going to require a lot of PP then. Starts a war between Bukhara and that area? Civil war? Promote socialism there. And Kyrgyzstan. Oh, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan. Kazakh support. Oh, so we need to have them under us first, maybe? At least we got that one done first. Of darkest Africa. Of all the lands of peoples of the earth, none have been more so oppressed and humiliated than those in Africa. Whether it be northern Africa today, under the fascist boot of Italy and Iberia, or sub-Saharan Africa, which has been under the imperialist, colonialist boot of Europe's various empires for hundreds of years. These people have known naught but pain and suffering. Surely among them are men and women who would fight for freedom and independence. Our agents in Africa have told us that there are, and that all we have to do is to provide the means for them to do so. These colonies, these bastions of superpower imperialism, cannot be tolerated any longer. Agriculture mechanization is okay. This stuff is just okay. Not really worth it. Um, what do we want to do here? A border conflict. Kazakh support. Kazakh National Republic. I mean, they're pretty nationalistic. If we... I don't want to spend PP here and not get anything out of this, so... Diplomats of Kazakhstan. Um, can they get cooed? I don't know. Hmm. Because that's Bukhara down here. So that would really be worth doing. Can I uh, increase stuff here? Maybe at all? No, we gotta wait, maybe. Yeah, I think we just gotta wait. Of Dacus Africa. Nice. Artillery's not looking great, but we're doing better on it. Fighters are looking okay. Get rid of these planes. I don't care about these planes, man. Not for this campaign. Strategic bombs would be nice to send nukes, but whatever. Um, main battle tanks and artillery. That's always it. APCs looking like you're doing well enough. Decrease in poverty if you want to build that, please. Go ahead. A toaster economist. Now only 15 to 25 percent poverty. Nice. Great. 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 30 billion still not too good, but hey, 8.8 .8, uh, percent for GDP is not bad. Or GDP growth. Nothing here yet. That's just fine. I mean, we could increase Kazakh support, maybe. We could try that. Support of Borg conflict would be nice. Now they're what percentage? 15 percent. Eh, is that really worth it? Not really. I don't think it is. Because we need to core their territory as well. But with that one done, we got still do total mobilization. You know, technically, we don't have to do it. We don't have to do this one. I really don't want to do it, just because it hurts us. But total mobilization is an interesting concept. It refers to the complete and total utilization of all resources a state is capable of mobilizing. To engage in the total mobilization of a nation is to convert said nation into an engine of war, consuming men and steel and machinery alike, and pumping out soldiers and rifles and tanks and planes. Many nations view total mobilization as a last resort, something to be utilized only when all else has failed. In order of socialism, total mobilization is an ideal, a goal to strive towards. Only through the total mobilization of all Russia has to offer can we crush the capitalist and cosmopolitan forces of the world. That's going to hurt us so much. Oh, what could we get 5% more after they're done? Okay. That's going to hurt us so much. We're trying to make more civvies. Jesus. I mean, we'll get more consumer goods, but still. So that one's done. These are all getting done. Do we really need to do that? I mean, we need more rubber, but no. So we don't really need to do that one. Um, Artillery. Yes. Hmm. So how are these guys looking right now? 61 divisions. Or, or 58 divisions, maybe. How good are they? They're, they're probably not too bad, actually. With well, 110,000 manpower. Alright, well, it's good to know exactly what our enemies have. That's so much less political power, though. 0.5. I'm mean, gonna get one a day, which is still not bad. That's still not bad. 10% consumer goods. Right now, what are we on? Our economic laws. Uh, four year draft. Basic training. Political laws. Social laws. Security wiretapping. Oh, we're on early mobilization? We're going to jump to this one. Early mobilization. So basically... Wait, we lose 10% consumer goods factories. What the heck? That's not worth it. That's absolutely not worth it. You lose another 0.45 political power. Yeah, that's really not worth it in TNO. That's really not worth it. Holy crap. But, oh well. It is what it is. Reunification. Russian National Soviet Republic. And, oh, a socialist dream and a nationalist dream. 
Uh, the people of Russia have survived much and deserve a reward. Here in the frozen tundra, Serov shall build a nationalist utopia. Following the guidelines set by the great thinkers like himself, Serov's union will be a paradise for all Russians. If... Oh, preparing for war. Uh, ooh. Capitalism, cosmop cosmopolitanism. These are the true enemies of the Russian people. The old Soviet Union failed to defeat these powerful foes, but Serov was going to give Russia a second chance. It was time for the Russian economy to mobilize, to prepare itself for a war. A time, a war against insidious forces of capitalism and cosmopolitanism. Serov's new U Soviet Union will not fall like the last one. It will stand strong in the face of adversity. While well, the economy mobilizes, the proletariat must mo prepare as well. They must be, they must harden themselves, answer the call of duty, and weather the inevitable sacrifices they will be forced to face. Under auto socialism, Russia is strong in this world. The strong are destined to survive, while well, the weak perish. Bukharin's Soviet Union was weak, having embraced cosmopolitanism and becoming allies to capitalism. It was inevitable that it would be destroyed. Serov's Soviet Union has been reformed, free of the impurities, and it was time to prove it to the world. The strong survive, the weak perish. That is all that matters in this world. But if you want to read about these, please go ahead. I've read this more than enough time, so I'll let you guys re read these if you like. And I guess we can't do any more uh, social improvement stuff. That makes sense. Alright, I guess influence. And end of wonders. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Boom. Come on. Why, why can we do anything there? Um, yeah, I'll probably kill these guys off first. Okay, so now they're at what? They're at 20%, which is not bad. I mean, does this do anything? I mean, we're going to probably take them out anyways. Promote socialism in Kyrgyzstan? I mean, I like to, but still. What happens if they go 55%? Socialist. Into the atomic age. It's at least start A job left unfinished. So much to do. The General Secretary was a man of few words at the best of times, but that didn't mean he was immune to the desires all great men have. To see the world in its assembled glory, to watch a nation he built in smooth and constant motion. It was like a train who set model sets, reached from one end of the Republic to the other, and Serov was intent on watching the little wheels roll and roll. Some of Serov's advisors compared him in his weaker moments to a young boy in a candy shop right now, disguised in the middle of a sick car. Serov could not have agreed more. Squads of heavyset guards enchanted songs as they paced the streets as women and children gathered in a market square. Serov noted their near-identical clothing with a great approval. The proletarian clothing program had been a greater success than he had anticipated. Banners, of course, were everywhere, and his eyes danced as he watched them fly above the people. As the sun rays cast long shadows over the scene, the streets seemed almost to emanate life in its wake, a glorious patish, and one untainted by capitalist degeneracy, Seraph felt an almost religious joy welling from his heart. Behind him, shout, Seraph turned just in time to witness a young man being accosted by a Red Army Youth uh, Corps group. Jeers of rootless cosmopolitan echoed from the sidewalks as he watched, the mockery turned to kicks, and the cosmopolitan was dragged into an alleyway, sawing, he turned back from the screams and quick paced his steps to the government quarters. It was a shame that such parasites lurked still in the body politic, and a warning to his complacency. There were always more enemies in the Republic, and he couldn't let the workers down by discovering them too late. At least the youth corpsman had done his duty, and so little time. Um, let's finish the purchase next, just to get this uh, debuff gone. Bukharin was a coward. Under his pitiful rule, he failed to truly cleanse the military of anti-revolutionary elements, leaving them to their own devices soon. His mistake will be rectified. Strict policies will be implemented, embedding everybody from the lowliest privates to the highest marshal. No longer will men be allowed to hold dangerous revisionist and counter-revolutionary views. Disobedience must be met with corporal or capital punishment. Um, that gives us better planes. Why not? We're still using planes from World War II, which is really bad, so. Cool. Alright, so now we have quite a few more factories to work with, it looks like. But the ability to produce them? Well, I guess it could be worse. You get 0.94 every single day, which is not honestly that great, but whatever. End of the atomic age, great. Uh, invisible hand, that's really good to get. Invisible boot. Preemptive security, even more cost. The magnificent red army. Oh, that's pretty good to do as well. But I want to get rid of this debuff as fast as possible. Decrease coring time is nice. Well, a lot more organization. Wow, 12.5% is pretty nice, not gonna lie. That's pretty good. Uh, we could cut that down, but I don't feel like it. Uh, is there something else here? There you go. Try that. A job left. I'm finished. And then we'll do the socialist one next. A socialist dream. Seraph has not compromised on his original socialist belief the Russian paradise will have social benefits, a command economy, and use the aesthetics of the old union. Who else but the Russians truly know communism have seen it so close? Only the Russian people can finally achieve that utopian ideal, for they are the only ones who have been so close to reaching it before. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, yeah, we'll do this stuff too. That's fine. Research facilities increase, safe foreign developments. We'll do that one too next if we can. That'd be nice. And, oh, Jesus. Not even a political power day. My goodness. That sucks. Uh, where are they at? 30%, I think? 25%? Only a quarter. That's not enough. Oh, job left unfinished. Nice. Better artillery's good too. Nice. Followed up with the Magnificent Red Army. 
The Red Army has its flaws, but were it not for the service, the very concept of Russia would not have, would have been extinguished long ago. The WRF does not share ideals, but their officers can be counted upon to take up the righteous cause. We will scream POWs to determine who to keep and who to kill. Through adaptation of every warlord's techniques, we will become unstoppable. Good, good, good. Can we actually send you guys now? Do we like the Baatis? Yes, we Oh, we can. Nice. Two divisions out. We need more tanks. Yep. Was I making any tanks yet? No, I'm not. Oh, such a mistake by me. Come on. Sending two 40 combo with divisions down to Baatis. Iraq is probably a bad idea. It's weird when Germans and we are fighting on the same side here, probably. Cool. 20 planes, huh? Get some World War II casts. That'll be good enough, right? Get some more Air XP for us, please. Thank you very much. A socialist dream, my friends. A socialist, socialist dream. Followed up with the Magnificent Red Army. Followed up with a Invisible Ham. The old Bolsheviks, in their new economic policy, instituted a small degree of capitalism. After all, Russian corporations would never betray a Russian national revolution. This will require a large investment, particularly into the economy and bureaucratic elements for such a large charter of civilian-controlled enterprises. The civilian sector, the men and women that make up our union, will greatly benefit, being prepared for the next great war. Get some more civvies. I love it. And we're suffering probably from attrition already, right? <laughs> Air XP is going up already. Awesome, awesome. And go to this one too when we can. Nice. Followed up with an invisible boot. Eh, that's okay. Do you get more PP, but eh, I'll do this one. A mission never accomplished. It seems that the tribal age never left the Tiaga. The entire region is rural and technologically backwards. Serap will allocate a large portion of the budget to prepare for a push to truly mass industrialization. The only kind of achievable by a socialist nation. The Tsar failed to tame this land, and so did Bukharin, but Serap will succeed. Maybe yeah, I, I should go in there immediately? No, you hold. Go over here. Ah, Gleb, you're back. Baghdad will be ours. It feels weird as it. Russian nation to actually be able to do this, so to actually send volunteers here is kind of awesome, actually. Nice. If you want to help support the attack, that's fine. With such big boys, you should be able to do well. And go to Mosul, and we'll have it won. Nice. Well, we've won, guys. We've won. Ba'atis victory in uh, Iraq. Great. If you'd like to read about closed research facilities, please go right ahead. And then socialism in one country. Oh, that's not bad. We can do that. Wait, wait for that one. Oh, I'll do that one first. I don't want any more cost. Internationalism. That fantasy is both unrealistic and dangerous. Russia is a land rich in resources and home to a hearty people. We are fully capable of realizing the motherland's potential without foreign aid. While some preach for a world revolution, they do not understand that other uh, nations are unable to comprehend socialism. It's simply not in their genes. Russians can only count on ourselves, and it'll be Russians that lead the glorious national revolution. Here, start that. Nice. Stronger, stronger, and stronger we shall become. How many divisions have we got? 14, 14, uh, 28, 28. Not bad. I'm going to keep these guys separate for now just because we might actually need them again. So, 0.95 is not bad. And you guys are about 30% now? That should be about 30%, right? Nice. I wonder if we can get a coup in there if we just get like up to 40% uh, or something. Oh, we have our guys down here too. Uh, as much as I want to keep you there, uh, head on over here actually. Or we'll end up going to war with them probably, so. Followed up with an invisible boot. The secret police sees all. In the darkest of nights, on the coldest of days, the agents report to Serov. None ever stop watching, of course. However, these disappearances are so well executed that most do not even know of their massive boot above their heads, ready to stamp out enemies of the state. Spend more for now, it's fine. It's fine, spend so we can create, create, create. Russians create, create, create. And it's 1970, of course. Is this the 71 that we get to go to war with these guys? I can't remember. And down there. Military intervention, we could do that. There you go. 
An invisible boot. Load up with what? Land doctrines, which we don't need anymore. Um, let's get this one, because that's really good. Oh, they went to war with them. Whipping Russia into shape. Russians have been hardened by decades of warlordism, so why not capitalize on this? The average Russian is used to living in a mud hole, eating the bare minimum, and sleeping at the most six hours a day. Harsh conditions build character, so we allow these conditions to be standard for a little longer. Creature comforts must be sacrificed to allow for massive industrialization. I was not expecting these guys to go to war with those guys immediately. But, the invasion of Kazakhstan. Um, if you're worried about that, please go right ahead. But, I think I'm going to end the episode here, because tomorrow we'll start off going to war with the Siberian Republic. Getting Kazakhstan under us, going to war with Muscovine probably, as well as Japan to get Korea. That's going to end in nuclear hellfire. But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, when we're going to blow up the world. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.